This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Welcome to DBL. It is Tuesday, February 2nd. I'm Sam in for Tori. I'm here with Alan Lindsay. Let's get started. So we know there's a giant winter storm that's hitting the Northeast. It's dumped a ton of snow all over New England and in New York City as if the pandemic isn't Heart isn't hard enough already on people. Now they have all the snowy weather to deal with. We are thinking of all of you. So if you are affected by the storm, please stay safe. 
ride it out as best as possible. Meanwhile, speaking of the pandemic, there is this new study I was reading about. It says that more than a third of us are walking around in a concussive daze. So what does that mean? It means that we are experiencing symptoms like you've had a concussion due to stress and lack of sleep. So that includes headaches, dizziness, anxiety, along with insomnia and trouble concentrating. Does this sound familiar to anyone, huh? But not to worry because scientists in South Korea are working on a brain implant that could help. It's the size of a grain of rice and it would allow you to pick your moods with a smartphone app. So you could pick to be happy, you could be, pick to be sad if I guess you want to be, or maybe something more a little in the middle like nostalgia. So here's the question, if you could, would you want to select your mood right as in DBL Nation? Always love to see what you have to say. Lindsay, would you select your mood? I feel like at first I was like, yeah, I'd be super happy. But then I was thinking about Black Mirror, that show on Netflix. And yeah. I'm like, what happens when you go down that slippery slope of like everybody's walking around like it's the Truman Show? Right. And just like so fake and like, eh, yeah, everything is good. And it's really not. So I think, you know, you need to go through ups and downs in life in order to understand what the good times are all about. So I think this would well, really ruin that. I'll tell you what that. you call that, Lindsay. That's called a cult. <laughs> That's a cult. Right. When everybody's in this weird fake, hello, Sam, how are you? No one wants to live like that. That's not real life. And I think you trying to select and cut out like Final Cut Pro, the good parts of your life, then you have nothing to compare them to without the bitter, the sweet ain't so sweet. You that know? was a good analogy, Final Cut. Yeah. <laughs> and there has to be some sort of a repercussion. There has to be. If you are grieving or if you're going through something devastating and then you somehow tinker with your mood, I can't imagine that your brain and that every cell in your body wouldn't somehow later reject that. Like there's a reason why you go through all the steps of grieving, right? So to take that away, I think later on, it would probably do something Sam, detrimental. What would you say to somebody that says, well, that's what antidepressants do. Well, I'm on antidepressants. Right, I think right. a lot of people it's, are and they work for you. They do work for me, but they listen, I've had a really hellish last couple of weeks. I've been very honest with our DBL Nation about my family and COVID and losing my dog of 18 years. And so for me, even though I'm on antidepressants, it helped take the edge off. But let me tell you, I was still on my right. hands and knees crying. You know, Al, yes, you were very course. much there for me. Yes. So even though antidepressants do help that chemical imbalance, you still have those really hellish days. And I and I'm happy for that. I don't want to right. be a zombie um, but what have you thought about just like that concussed state have you thought because of the pandemic because of quarantine that you feel like you're a little bit like a zombie or do you feel like Lindsay no I feel like I mean I'm an extrovert so I was talking to my therapist about mm. this like there's different ways that this pandemic is affecting introverts and affecting extroverts. And for me, somebody who likes being around people and going out, my boyfriend Colin is an introvert, so he doesn't really care, uh, even though he has extroverted tendencies and personality, but he really likes to be by himself. And so I'm just like freaking out. Like I'm having a meltdown. Like I'm tired of being around no one. FaceTime is not the same as it was back last March when we all get on Zoom, you know, just totally different. So I understand feeling like you're just going through the days because at some point during this pandemic, every day started to feel like a random Wednesday to me. There's almost Absolutely. like nothing to look forward to either. Mm -hmm. You know, like you get so excited to go to like a Super Bowl party or go and do this or go see your friends or your family or go out to dinner on Friday night. That's all been taken away. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah, and it shows you how quickly time because I got a memory and it was when we had the Super Bowl party at Erica's. I remember I, d I drove Dr. Drew home. Had a, we had a great conversation and that seems like it was 20 I years know. ago. Right. I know when you, you were know, wearing your little Miami Vice. Yes, outfit. I had I had my ones that my uh, my male romper on. I did. <laughs> I like that outfit. <laughs> Dig, I forgot about that thing. And show it at the end of the show. Producers, it was the star of the party. I'll, yeah, I have it on my phone. I'll They're going to work on it. I'm just told they're okay. working on it. Okay, so one of my favorite politicians, Bernie Sanders, is getting called out. It's all over this photo that went viral, spawning all sorts of social media memes. But now a teacher in San Francisco calling him out, saying that the image shows his white male privilege, explaining that no woman would get away with dressing down like that at the inauguration. To her point, if you look at some of the women who attended the event, they were definitely not as casual as Bernie. They were dressed to the nine. So what do you all think? Does this teacher have a point or is this woke culture gone too far? Woke culture meaning too PC. Uh, do you think that a woman would have been celebrated like Bernie did or do you think she would have been completely criticized? I, I don't understand how we're still talking about this grumpy chic outfit that he had on. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I, I mean, I think that yes, 
Yes, a woman can't wear that. We saw when Hillary Clinton was on the campaign trail, a pantsuit was a problem. We also saw a black person get criticized, Barack Obama, when he had head to toe beige on. And so, yes, I understand why outfits get criticized, and I understand why this professor or teacher had a point in their statements. But I also think that this is Bernie Sanders, and I believe it was this whole ploy that's part of his whole image. I'm a man of the people. I'm wearing these Hands gloves. Down. And so, to me, it's not just any politician doing this. It's somebody who's been loyal to what their sticking talking points have been this whole time and doing what we expected them to do. I still think he could have dressed better, but that's what he chose to do. I mean, I, I think the fact that he dresses like that is the reason he wasn't a more serious candidate for president. I think, I remember, no one could come at his policies. No one wanted to see him on the debate stage. Everybody came everyone at his came list. For everybody everybody, everybody came for his like policies. I want to just counteract that. Right. I'm just, his policies are a little bit out there. Any, do you think any candidate that we have really wanted to go on national TV and go head to head with Bernie on policy? First of all, I'm not saying all, you can't win. Do, I'm just saying Bernie knows his stuff. But do men get away with it over women? Of course they do. If Kamala Harris showed up wearing her knit mittens, you, and I know you hate when I say mittens. I love it. But you know for a fact everybody would have criticized her the next day. Instead, Bernie, who I love, by the way, was put up on a pedestal, made a meme, oh, there's Bernie, the everyday guy. That would Sam, not have happened with Kamala. They said he did not have a presidential look. That was the over both parties. They said Bernie would show up with wild hair. It's white. It's so silver. It's he looks like a, a weird professor, and people did not. There's a reason that every senator has that senator haircut, where it just looks <laughs> like you haven't laughed in months because that's what voters resonate towards. They need that hard helmet hair from the women and the sad senator You're hair from the men. The but, but, yeah, no, women I'm can't get away with that. That's the bottom line. Women him. wearing that He's are going to get criticized every step of the way. So I do agree with this professor, but I understand whatever I say, she's being overly woke because that's Bernie Sanders, who he's been at the core for what? Two he's decades, anomaly. three decades, exactly. Completely agree with you, Lindsay, but you still did not answer the question. That his what? look has hurt him, not Enough helped him. Enough of Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Put women and 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 men together, all things being equal. If Kamala showed up with the Well don't say Kamala because she won. If, okay. if, if okay. Elizabeth Warren wore that. Amen. Amen. I think that's the thing. Elizabeth Warren did not look presidential to people. That's <gasps> what it is. Ooh. I am serious. Look, <laughs> there is a reason that all of our candidates all basically look the same. They have that same hard hair, <laughs> that same okay. uniform haircut, because we don't accept anything okay, so else that doesn't equal. look like you Bernie. You think all things being equal. I'm, that looks anything other than Bernie. Yeah, right. so I think that's of a problem. Of course the guy saying that I know. Equal. Come I on, know. Al. You don't got to think about your outfit in the same way that Sam and I do every day when we get up on the stage. That's mm -hmm. because I'm a gorgeous human being. I wake up like this. You are it's gorgeous. not my fault. You are gorgeous. <laughs> no. <laughs> Coming up on DBL, a mysterious disappearance almost 20 years ago with no sign of a missing woman. Where could she be? That's later in True Crime Chronicles. Plus, watching the Super Bowl pandemic style, the CDC has new guidelines for celebrating safely. But will football fans actually listen? And before we go to break, you guys, check out our coworkers watching the show from home during the ongoing pandemic. We've missed them, but here they are. That's the magic behind the scenes. We couldn't do it without you guys. Hey, Karen. Hey, Arash. Hey, Kiri. We'll be right back. Those are my people. This is
Quickly, just wanted to say hey to all our co workers at home right now. What's up, Leo, BJ? Okay, Arash. They're working hard and tuning in. So the big game is only a few days away, but fans are probably not going to be gathering with a bunch of friends like we usually do. The CDC has issued new guidelines for watching the game safely. They're urging fans to watch the game only with people you live with. If you do throw or attend a house party, stay six feet apart from others, wear masks, and keep the guest list small. The CDC also suggests holding an outdoor viewing party by showing the game on a projector. And finally, they strongly advise against cheering, shouting, or singing. Instead, you can clap, you can stomp your feet, you can use them noisemakers when your team mm. scores. Don't boo, Al, it's better I'm than not, getting COVID. I have to adhere to, we, here, we support all safety guidelines, but I'm allowed to groan. I talk to our, no one's gonna stomp their feet, Sam. I might. That's what, that's <laughs> not, if somebody did that, you gotta go. <laughs> it's just like, just don't even do it. It's not, it's not worth it. Lindsay, <laughs> if, if a team scored now, it's like, Right, like, that's would you so be, weird. Could I stay at your house after I did that? No, you gotta, you gotta just, leave. And the, the whole concept is weird because even as somebody who doesn't even watch football religiously, I go to a Super Bowl party pretty much every year just because it's like the halftime show, other things, and this is just like gonna be awkward. Just, I, well, not, I'm gonna have to pay attention to the actual game now. Lindsay, Sam, who do you guys predict for the game? This, this, uh, and what strategies do you think I they use? I don't care. I only care <laughs> about that halftime show and the commercials, and I cannot wait to see the week and perform because supposedly he put in like seven million dollars yeah, of his crazy. own money to really wow us all and make it interactive to help lift us up during the pandemic so i'm going to be watching for the weekend and the weekend only and i may just be stomping my feet even though it's just going to be won't me, be you me won't even know what it happened to be stomping your feet or not albert how much Jackson. is the touchdown worth <laughs> how much is the touchdown worth seven you can't oh answer God. it with that much confidence and be wrong. Let me Seven, tell you, I, I said nine. Six for the goal kick. <laughs> yes, it's I'm field. excited that we can see a black quarterback win twice in a row, which will be the first time that happens, or Tom Brady win, who is like the LeBron, honestly, of football at this point. Right. And as somebody who didn't like Tom Brady, because I'm from New York, I'm impressed. He's, I gotta say, finally, I'm, I'm impressed. Glad, I'm glad 10 <laughs> Super Bowl. He's finally. been in the Super Bowl 10 times, and Lindsay's like, all right, I'll hear him. Yeah, out. now he went to, I mean, Tampa sucked, so this is a, a really good thing that he did there here. This go. will be his 11th time, Al. See, I know well, he, Ooh, uh -huh. he hasn't been there yet, so I'm not predicting the future. He might decide not to go. Oh, he's, he's been, been to 10 oh, thus far. No, Thank that's you. not a good catch. Right. That wasn't even a good catch. Okay, um, coming up on DBL, a teenage girl's shocking disappearance almost two decades ago. Where could she be after all this time? New clues in True Crime Chronicles. DBL is recognizing black leaders who are making history right now. Like 22-year-old Amanda Gorman, whose profound poem, The Hill We Climb, was recited during the inauguration. We are striving to forge our union with purpose. Amanda Gorman, thank you for using your voice to uplift and inspire us.
Welcome back to DBL. Rachel Cook went for a run when she vanished in broad daylight. This month marks 19 years and still no sign of the Texas teen. What really happened that day? Here's an update in True Crime Chronicles. Rachel Cook was born and raised in Georgetown, Texas. There were two things the 19-year-old cared most about, her family and running. She was an accomplished cross-country runner. She was just a light that shone so brightly. After graduating high school, Rachel moved to San Diego for college. It was January 2002. Rachel was back home in Texas visiting her family over winter break. It was a normal morning. Her family went to work and Rachel left to go on a six mile run in the neighborhood. She never made it back home that day. Every day, I think about her at least 100,000 times a day. I mean, she's part of me and I'm not gonna give up. Rachel vanished in broad daylight. Several people reported seeing her running that day. We still get tips weekly on the Cook case. Um, I'm the case agent and I have six dedicated reserves that do nothing but Rachel Cook every single day. Thousands of tips came in, but no evidence or big leads. Rachel's family even formed their own search groups. I can't believe everybody, you know, that many people showed up. 17 years passed and finally something. Police found a car in Dallas connected to several persons of interest, but it wasn't enough to crack the case. And then in 2020. New tips and now new sketches showing two persons of interest in the Rachel Cook case. Police named these two men as prime suspects. They were both spotted in the area where Rachel was last seen, just 100 yards from her family home. A big break in the case, but investigators are still stuck. We are now visiting this tree almost as long as she's been alive. So put that in perspective, it's, it's unfathomable, you know? It really is. Rachel would have been 38 years old today. She was good. She was good people. Very loving, very caring. And for somebody to take that from this community, it's not right. It's not right. And at this point, I just want closure. Earlier, Al and I spoke with a reporter who shared new updates in this case. Take a look. We are joined by senior reporter Tony Plohetsky from KVUE in Austin, Texas. Tony, thank you so much for being here. Uh, let's get right to it. Police just announced they are pursuing a new person of interest. Who is this suspect and how did he just now come to light? On the anniversary of Rachel Cook's disappearance, authorities did release new information about someone else they are now trying to track down. They did not release a name. I think it is clear they don't have a name at this point, but they did release a brief description uh, about the person. And essentially what they said is that they believe that he was an acquaintance of Rachel Cook. They believe that he traveled to cities throughout the state possibly involved in the horsing or cattle industry here in the state, which of course is a major industry. And at the same time, according to what authorities did release, they do believe that he may have had intricate knowledge of Rachel Cook's disappearance and of the crime itself, and may have shared that information with other people in this region. There are a lot of theories out there that it could have been Rachel's father or boyfriend at the time involved. Is there any truth to those claims? Not really is the short answer to that. A lot of these, uh, in a lot of cases, in a lot of instances like this, of course, we all know that different theories can emerge over the years, send investigators in one direction or another. There have been, uh, not unlike a lot of other cases that remain unsolved like this, a lot of conspiracy theories that seem to emerge over time. But so far, nothing really has stopped and certainly nothing that has led to an arrest or indictment or charges or conviction of anyone in this case. And Tony, I, I can't imagine what her family is going through and uh, we all want closure for them. It's been almost two decades. How is her family handling everything and what do they make of the new leads? 
Her mother does remain a very outspoken advocate for her daughter, uh, using the anniversary of her death, her birthday, to try to continue to bring public awareness to this case, again, hoping that it could trigger some sort of new information. But the last time I talked to her, what she also told me is just how difficult it has been through the years to ride a roller coaster of emotion, trying to remain hopeful, becoming hopeful with these new facts that seem to come out, and yet not getting too hopeful because over the years she's had that hope and then seen it uh, really wither away when these new possible leads did not really go anywhere. Uh, a parent's worst nightmare, uh, absolutely. absolutely. And I just, thank you, Tony, for bringing the story to light because if we can help solve it, the viewers, everybody please to learn more about this case, visit kvue.com. Tony, we appreciate you as thank always. You, Great to see you. We'll be right back. Promotion. is happening this February on DBL, you're not gonna wanna miss a day. Marie Osmond's first TV interview about leaving the talk and her relationship with Donnie today. Former Hollywood madam Heidi Fleiss, two decades after all the scandal. 
Plus, the classic game show hosts you grew up with are here on DBL. And your favorite nighttime soap stars from the 80s, where are they now? To this day, I don't wake up or go to sleep not being grateful. Patrick Duffy from Dallas, Knott's Landing stars Joan Van Ark and Michelle Lee, and from Paul and Ringo to Eddie Van Halen, stories you've never heard about rock's greatest stars. You know, it just gives me chills thinking about that. Set your DVRs every day because February is Can't Miss TV here on DBL. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Don't miss a single day. Okay, so I was gonna share comments, but we actually have a little gem. Here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, Al's oh. outfit! <laughs> now, let me tell you, it was February in Denver, so it was usually supposed to be like two degrees, but that day, Al got lucky, and it was like 65. It was. Yeah, and he <laughs> what turned a great up. day. He turned what up and turned day. out. Well done. All right, a quick goodbye to all our coworkers who watch us from home today. We couldn't put the show on without you. We love you. We appreciate you. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Take care. today on Daily Blast Live. Pandemic stress hits an all-time high with adults actually walking around in a concussion like days. Are we all just zombies right now? And would you take a new brain implant to select your mood? A teacher gets criticized for her take on Bernie's inauguration attire, saying women could never get away with dressing down like that. Is she right? Or is woke culture going too far? Angelina Jolie graces the cover of British Vogue, opening up about everything from moving five minutes down the road from ex Brad Pitt to failing as a stay-at-home mom. And will the Super Bowl be a super spreader for COVID? What the CDC is saying about no cheering or singing this year. Real. Honest. Entertaining. Live. DBL starts right now. Welcome to DBL. It is Tuesday, February 2nd. I'm Sam here with Jeff and Al. Erica joining us from home. Okay, so we know there is a giant winter storm that's hitting the Northeast. It's dumped a ton of snow all over New England and in New York City. So as if the pandemic isn't hard enough already on people, now they have all this snowy weather to deal with. So if you are affected by the storm, we are thinking of you. Please stay safe and ride it out as best as possible. Meanwhile, speaking of the pandemic, there is this new study many of you have been talking about. It says that more than a third of us are walking around in a concussive daze. So what does that exactly mean? It means that we're experiencing symptoms like you've had a concussion due to stress and lack of sleep. So that includes headaches, 
dizziness, anxiety, along with insomnia and trouble concentrating. Sound familiar to anyone? But not to worry because scientists in South Korea are working on a brain implant that could help. It's the size of a grain of rice and it would allow you to pick your moods with a smartphone app. So you could pick to be happy, you could pick to be sad, I guess, or maybe something more a little in the middle like nostalgia. So here's the question and I want DBL Nation to chime in here. We always want to hear what you have to say. If you could, would you want to select your mood? What would you do, Al? I don't know. I'd probably uh, watch over my iPhone a little bit better if somebody can decide how I'm going to be feeling. You know, but honestly, <laughs> I kind of, uh, yeah, like that's a lot of power to if give somebody. If I lived with you and I was like, ooh, I'm about to ask Al something that could benefit me, let me change his mood. <laughs> and setting it to vulnerable. Receptive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I kind of, I like the roller coaster, Jeff. I like I, the ups and downs of life and that kind of, without the bitter, the sweet ain't so sweet, you know? Absolutely. Without rain, you're not going to enjoy the sun, right? Honestly. Life is about adversity and learning from those li learning from those adverse moments in your life and growing from them and appreciating the good ones. That's exactly what life is. That growing older, you appreciate the small things, the little things. I appreciate the way Al is dressed today. What is going on? You look terrific. Oh, thank I you. I'm wearing, uh, I'm wearing my uh, my tie clip uh, that my kids got me from my in, in this pocket square and the tie that but my see, kids got me for Christmas. That's a perfect example of appreciation. Right, you wear a yeah. tie yesterday. I appreciate your outfit today. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Oh, thank my you. Oh. Erica Chime in here, please. <laughs> Well, I agree with the zombie-like state. Like, y'all, I am not the sharpest that I've ever been in my life um, over the past year. Every time I'm having a conversation with my husband, I'm like, can you just explain it to me like I'm a five-year-old? Because <laughs> it's, it's just a lot. It's a lot. But in terms of, like, having a app to change your mood, I wouldn't say for the average person, but if this is another step um, past, like, antidepressants, um, there are people who are really in a severe state of struggle hmm. and if this was something that would help someone um, maybe even save their life I'm not against it my only concern Erica you make a really great point but my only concern would be if you somehow tinker past like a grieving stage or past a stage where your it shows like on a molecular level that your body responds to certain stages of grief right if you can somehow fast track you know, through that. And listen, I'm on antidepressants, but I still feel everything. It does take the edge off, so to speak, but that's somebody that needs that balance because I am chemically imbalanced. So for me, it just balances me. But if I can't imagine if I never went through stages to allow my body and my brain and my heart to heal. So I'm just a little afraid that if we fast track that, what will the repercussions be later on? Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I, oh, totally. Oh. I just think, you know, just like there's an extra level to people who may who may truly need it just to survive another day, right. um, this might be something that if someone was in a state of severe depression, suicidal, maybe this is something that could help them at least get another day so that they could get some help. Temporarily. I like it. I really do. Chime in, DBL Nation. We want to hear from you as well. So one of my favorite politicians, I've made it no secret, Bernie me? Sanders, you're not a politician now, <laughs> is getting you, called out. You look out. like one today. Thank you. do you. look good. You look great. Uh, okay, so he's getting <laughs> called out all over this photo that went viral, right? Spawning all sorts of social media memes. We covered them. But now, a teacher in San Francisco is calling him out, saying that the image shows his white male privilege, explaining that no woman would get away with dressing down like that at the inauguration. So to her point, if you look at some of the women who attended the event, they were definitely not as cash as Bernie. They were dressed to the nines. So what do you all think does this teacher have a point or is this woke culture gone too far woke culture being uh, PC on. politically correct Erica okay girl <laughs> go 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 Let's be honest, there likely was a woman who was dressed just as down as Bernie was, but the difference is when women do that, they're invisible. When men do it, it's comical. How many times have we gone to a place where it's like, you walk in and it's like, I dressed for my audience, you dressed for at home, but that's okay. You know, this is how I'm, I'm used to coming in and presenting myself every day. I think it's kind of a stretch to put all of these other qualifiers on the idea that Bernie Sanders was just being Bernie. 
Bernie Sanders. And for that reason, people glom onto that. There were people, women, just dressed as casually as Bernie. We just didn't see them as we never do. However, now I agree with Erica's invisible point. However, all things being equal, let's take Bernie Sanders out of this because he is, that picture is so on brand for him, right? And mm -hmm. we all love that about him and that's the anomaly in this. However, all things being equal, Jeff, don't you think that a woman would be more criticized instead of being elevated and celebrated in memes like Bernie? Look, Bernie should have been our president twice. If I were him, I'd show up in sweatpants because I'd be <laughs> mad at the whole Democratic Party for not nominating me, right? You have Hillary Clinton who looked like she was running for president of Legoland. So let's talk yeah. about outfits if we're going to do that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I had to get, get that one yeah. in there. Legoland? She wears those box outfits all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That that's must be my white male privilege, like this lady's uh, alluded to, that everyone just glosses over. Can we go there for a minute? Okay, go, okay? go, go there. If you have a movement that you're trying to suppress or someone that you're trying to suppress, when has it ever been okay to suppress anyone for their nationality, their color of their skin, their sexual orientation? White male privilege, what is this new woke culture that we're in that it's okay to just call people out like that? Bernie Sanders is wearing mittens and he's white privileged? That's, I, that's ridiculous. Well, Can we go down this rabbit hole a little bit? Erica, go and then I'll chime in if I need to. There Jeff, let's just be honest, and I feel like we may actually be on the same page here. There is a space to acknowledge white male privilege. In fact, it is long overdue. However, I think putting it onto every single thing might dilute the message, yes. let's say. I don't want to give, you know, I don't want to um, dismiss what this woman has to say. Perhaps this is, I mean, uh, an idea of white male privilege. I certainly have walked into spaces where I have been dressed either appropriately or feel like I have to be heightened in my decor, my dress, because I need to be taken seriously, where a white male could walk in and say, I'm here, that's enough. So yes, I understand that, but I think the Bernie Sanders example is just a little bit of a stretch to me. It, it's a lot of a stretch. Well, take Bernie out of it. Okay, I'll put myself in it. I don't. I hate the word white privilege. I hate that. It diminishes all my accomplishments, which I set out in life to do. Right? Don't look at me like with that face, because I'm telling you how I feel. Okay. And I'm, I'm just expressing my example. I'm not. I'm not on a soapbox here. I'm not trying to rally people. I'm telling you, it diminishes my accomplishments. I've earned this seat. Okay. My mother came here on a boat from Italy. What privilege do I have? My, I had a suburban life in Chicago. My father worked hard. I'm not a fourth generation, fifth, sixth generation legacy to a Harvard graduation. I've worked hard for what I've got. And to, to diminish it with the word white privilege, I don't appreciate. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't all, think I'm we've heard anybody speak that honestly on I, TV I'm, ever. I was. I appreciate what you said. Thank you. And I, Whether you, anybody at home agrees or disagrees, I'm, 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 I appreciate the honesty. Go ahead. Sarah. I do too. No, I appreciate you being transparent. And I never, ever, ever want to diminish how you feel. But taking you out of it, the most you know, uh, the poorest white man still has more privilege than the richest black man. And that's just the truth of it all. It and, doesn't take away any- and I'll, and I'll agree with you. If, we, if we're looking at a track, like a running track, right? And there's a starting line. I'm way ahead of that starting line for the worst scenarios in life. I think we all are at this table, right? But to put a race or religion or culture or sexual orientation and just group them into that and say white male privilege, there is no other, there is no other label you could put in that in today's terms and it'd be okay and we just pass over it. You're, you think it's gone too far? Bernie Sanders mittens is white male privilege. Oh, I'm, we gotta I'm go. sorry, sorry, we gotta go. But. Yep, great conversation. Thank you for the transparency. Erica, stick around. Passion. Coming up on DBL, <laughs> Angelina Jolie is getting very candid about parenthood in a brand new interview. Why she thinks she failed as a stay-at-home mom. Michelle Pfeiffer says she will not work with her husband. The same producer behind hit shows like Big Little Lies will tell you why. Plus, watching the Super Bowl pandemic style? The CDC has new guidelines for celebrating safely, but will fans actually listen and before we go to break check out our co-workers watching the show from home during the pandemic doing all their magic behind the scenes we couldn't do it without you guys we miss you yes leo we'll be right back <laughs> this is a smile <laughs> Although COVID-19 is known for attacking the lungs, a disturbing range of symptoms have been tied to the virus, including blood clots, heart damage, and even neurological disorders. Now, according to information published in the journal Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism, over 14% of people hospitalized with severe COVID-19 
developed diabetes. Some of the patients had no pre-existing risk factors for the disease. Right now, researchers say they can't prove a direct link between COVID-19 and these new diabetes cases, but they are definitely investigating. Cases of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes have been reported. Type 1 is when your body can't make the insulin needed to control blood sugar. Type 2 is when your body makes too little or becomes insulin resistant. They're also investigating if COVID-19 has created an entirely new type of diabetes that works differently. There are also questions about whether these diagnoses are permanent. Other viruses like SARS have been linked before to new cases of diabetes, but in that instance, blood sugar levels for most patients return to normal within two years. Meanwhile, researchers continue to collect data on coronavirus and diabetes in the hope of getting answers. This February, DBL is all new every day. Like, it is such a joke. Your no, 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 hold on. I was shocked. I don't know what you're saying. Here come the Pistons. I love this story. Stick with us in 2021. We're going to have a great year. <laughs> DBL. Uh, hey, quickly, look at that. Mm -hmm. It's all our co-workers at home right now working hard and tuning in. We miss you guys. It's so good to see your faces. So the big game is only a few days away, but fans are probably not going to be gathering with a bunch of friends like we usually do. The CDC has issued new guidelines for watching the game safely. They're urging fans to watch the game only with people who you live with. If you do throw or attend a house party, stay six feet apart from others, wear masks and keep the guest list small. The CDC CDC also su suggests holding an outdoor viewing party by showing the game on a projector. And finally, they strongly advise against cheering, shouting, or singing. Instead, clap, stomp your feet, use some noisemakers when your team scores. Yes. No. What's with the, speaking of faces, what's with that face? <laughs> noisemakers and stomp your feet? Better than getting COVID. Barely. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Erica, what if I showed up at your party wearing noise with noisemakers? You're noise not makers? going to her party I know, because but I'm you're going to adhere no one... to the CDC guidelines. So then why do I need noisemakers with just me and my people in the house? Because some people might break the CDC guidelines. Let's just all talk about the elephant in the room. Erica, we're so sad we can't come to your party. Yes, That's Erica, it. you've spoiled us. I know. You keep saying if you can't come to my party, but the party is canceled, so there is no party, no, so you don't have to have I know FOMO. you're going to have a bottle of um, champagne with you and Anthony and still going to be off the chain. <laughs> And I just oh, off yeah. the chain. Well, well Anthony <laughs> and I are definitely going to celebrate. It's going to be off the chain, of course. There of you course. Go. But yeah, there's no party. Um, yeah, it's so sad because that was like our gathering for February, and everybody would come. I'm going to miss you guys. You know who else came to that party? This outfit. <laughs> Oh, wow. No, it I was like dope, it. dude. That was the coolest was, outfit. The, <laughs> it made a splash in February. Wait, remember how how warm it was that I day? Know it, it was, was like 70 super warm. Yeah, that day. it was. It was like 65 that day. And you know what? I don't know about you guys, but that party marked really like ground zero for uh, the pandemic for me because that was the last time I was ever in a like a large group of people. Because I think like a week outing. later, you know it started getting weird. So that party is like where I mark. Pre-COVID and post-COVID is Erica's Super Bowl party. I know. Now, to time. bring it full circle. And more importantly, to wrap this, no one got sick, just so everybody oh, yeah. knows. No, yep. Good point. But if Al came with the noisemaker, he'd be laughed out of that party. Yes. Well, he's not, not going to the party because COVID. <laughs> 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 the little Come, crank ones. Coming up on DBL, Lady Gaga's cookies are flying off store shelves. Why her new Oreo line is so hard to come by. But first, our medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, is back to answer your questions about the coronavirus. Don't go away. Nearly 110 million. 
The COVID-19 pandemic has dominated our minds and our lifestyles. It's reached the point where it's difficult to make simple decisions like what to have for dinner or what movie to watch. It's called decision fatigue. And here's the connection to the pandemic. Psychologists tell us stress makes decision making more difficult. The pandemic has created added stress and the need to make more decisions. A visit with a friend wasn't stressful before the pandemic. Now we have to weigh the risks with the benefits as information on COVID-19 is updated. Psychologists tell us that since the onset of the pandemic, people are experiencing mental burnout earlier in the day. They suggest breaks between Zoom meetings with a walk around the house to give the brain a rest to lessen the impact of decision fatigue. This February, DBL is all new every day. No, 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 no. No, I think that's ridiculous. Really? Yes. Okay. Like, it is such a joke. I was shocked. Oh, I meant for you to chime in on. I don't know what you're saying. DBL is just getting started. Here come the Pistons. I love this story. Stick with us in 2021. We're going to have a great year. <laughs> Welcome back to DBL. Although we're making progress in the pandemic, there's still a lot of uncertainty. That's why our medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, joins us live. Hey, Doc. Hey, so Doc. Today, we are answering... Hey, guys. I Hi. wish I had a noisemaker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we got to be safe, right, Dr. Coley? So, sorry, everybody. You better be stomping. That's absolutely right. Yeah, snapping, doing what you got to do. All right, we got to... Okay. Poetry slam. <laughs> Leave me alone. Okay, let's get to Dr. Coley. Okay, my family's <laughs> lifeline. Uh, our first question is from Cheryl. She asks, is it true that I may not develop immunity with a vaccine if I'm already immunocompromised? If so, what is the point in getting vaccinated? A good question, Cheryl. So we know that if you're immunocompromised, your immune response may be altered in response to the vaccine. But we also know that you're one of the highest risk groups if you do get COVID. So, you know, there were people who were immunocompromised in the trials and they did just fine. And we need more data to know exactly how robust their antibody response is. But I would say because the vaccine is safe and even though your response may be blunted, it is likely to offer you some protection. I would recommend getting vaccinated, even if you're immunocompromised. All right, we got a question from Madison and Madison wants to know, are you immune to new variants if you've had COVID-19 already? No, you are oh, not. Man. And this is the scary part. So yeah, new data has just emerged. And Dr. Fauci just commented on this yesterday, actually, and said that rate of reinfection in people who've already had COVID-19 is still occurring at a very high rate. And you know, it's not all that surprising because the virus is getting smarter. It's like those dinosaurs from Jurassic Park. You know, mm. they're learning how to trick our body. So they're attaching to our cells a little bit tighter. They're also learning how to evade the antibodies that, that our body makes. And that that's how the mutants are able to reinfect people who've already had COVID-19. But I worry about a few things with this development. The first is all the millions of Americans who've already suffered with COVID-19. Imagine getting it a second time around. I mean, that would be devastating. And then second, there's some data emerging that the second time around may actually be worse because oh, wow. your body's already primed to go into that hyper-inflammatory state and you just set it off. So we really have to blunt these mutants from you know, taking over, just like the virus took over last year. We gotta keep these mutants at bay right now. There's a few cases. We gotta keep it down by doing all the measures we know that work and getting those vaccines. That's oh, terrifying. I, I, I'm scared to ask you another question, Doc, because uh, it's a little bit, it's been a little scary. We need a silver lining here. Uh, Ryan says, I've never had symptoms, but tested positive for antibodies. Am I contagious? 
So that's your silver lining, Al. No, once you got those antibodies, your virus has happened. It's usually about two weeks after the viral infection has happened. You're not contagious anymore. So being positive on an antibody test doesn't mean you're contagious. In fact, many of us who get the vaccine will now turn positive on an antibody test. But remember, that's different from a PCR test. So PCR, up the nose, antibody, in your arm blood test. So just remember those two differences because even though you're positive on antibodies, you're not spreading this to others. In fact, you're protected. Interesting. Awesome. And you've had both of your vaccines, right? Dr. Coley, you're done? I have, I'm done. And a lot of my friends are actually getting the antibody test after they get that second dose after two weeks to see if they made antibodies. So I may do that report back to you guys. Incredible. Right. Thank you, doctor. And if you have any COVID-19 questions for our Dr. Coley, write us on social media or email info at dailyblesslive.com. We'll be right back. Promote. <laughs> Big number off the top, 66%. That's how effective Johnson & Johnson's vaccine is at preventing COVID-19. Much lower than Pfizer and Moderna's, which are in the upper 90s. So let's verify, why is Johnson & Johnson's vaccine needed to end the pandemic? Our sources are the vaccine test results from Johnson & Johnson and Dr. Anthony Fauci, the country's leading infectious diseases expert. Let's start with that 66% effectiveness. According to Johnson & Johnson's test results, that was the average from the global test. The results in the United States put that number higher at 72%. In an interview with our Verify team, Dr. Anthony Fauci said it's also effective at preventing people with COVID cases from going to the hospital. One of the things that might get lost in the numbers is that when you look at the protection against serious disease, it's high. It's 85% or more. Those are just the numbers. Johnson & Johnson's vaccine is also more practical for widespread use across the country. It can be stored in a normal refrigerator, whereas Pfizer's vaccine requires a special deep freezer. Another point, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is only one shot, compared to Pfizer and Moderna's, which are two shots spread out over a month. So even though the number makes you raise your eyebrows and say, well, there's a big difference between 72 and 95, Practically speaking, if the only thing you're worried about is keeping people out of the hospital and not getting people seriously ill, there clearly is value added with the Johnson & Johnson. This February, DBL is all new every day. No, I think that's ridiculous. Really? Okay. Like, it is such a joke. I was shocked. Oh, I meant for you to chime in on. I don't know what you're saying. DBL is just getting started. Here come the Pistons. I love this story. Stick with us in 2021. We're going to have a great year. is happening this February on DBL, you're not going to want to miss a day. Marie Osmond's first TV interview about leaving the talk and her relationship with Donnie today. Former Hollywood madam Heidi Fleiss, two decades after all the scandal, 
Plus, the classic game show hosts you grew up with are here on DBL. And your favorite nighttime soap stars from the 80s, where are they now? To this day, I don't wake up or go to sleep not being grateful. Patrick Duffy from Dallas, Knott's Landing stars Joan Van Ark and Michelle Lee, and from Paul and Ringo to Eddie Van Halen, stories you've never heard about rock's greatest stars. You know, it just gives me chills thinking about that. Set your DVRs every day because February is Can't Miss TV here on DVL. You don't want to miss a single day. Okay, we're getting a lot of comments in regard to white privilege, of course. Uh, Jonathan says, Jonathan says, I think people are misunderstanding the message. It is not diminishing anyone's accomplishments or reflective of their own personal challenges. It is recognizing that others may have a disadvantage. I think you would agree with that. Yeah, I definitely would. And I agree that I am at a different starting point in life. It's a conversation that we need to have. I can't wrap it up in one second, but Do I have it. to. I have a longer conversation. Yes, yes. Agree with you. If you're leaving us, you can watch Watch the second half of the show on Facebook or YouTube. You can chat with other viewers, send in comments, and we'll read them on TV. It's your chance to be part of DBL Nation. And if you're sticking around, here's what's coming up. Al's favorite, Girl Scout mm. cookies. We'll tell you how you can get your hands on some boxes during a pandemic. Plus, Angelina Jolie gets candid about her ex-husband and parenthood. You don't want to miss that. And check out our co-workers tuning in from home. We can't be in the studio together because of the virus, but they're working hard at least we get to see their faces dbl's new every day we'll be right back Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two. Welcome to DBL. I'm Sam here with Jeff and Al. Erica joins us from home. Okay, so Angelina Jolie is opening up about her divorce from Brad Pitt and how it affected their family. Angelina appears on the cover of the March, oh, she looks fantastic, on the March issue of British Vogue. She admits that the last few years have been hard following her split from Brad in 2016. But they look says, terrible. Okay, Al, but says things now are looking more positive. For example, she chose to buy a new house because it's just minutes away from Brad. Angie also confesses that she's not cut out to be a traditional stay-at-home mom. She says that even though she wanted a big family, she imagined it to be more adventurous, like traveling through the jungle. Um, 
uh, listen, I think this is great that she's transparent. You don't have to be, you know, whatever makes you the best mom is the right recipe, right? If you want to be a stay-at-home mom and that fulfills you, if you want to be a working mom and that fulfills you, be your best self and then you'll be the best version amplified and emulated by your kids. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I'm glad they're reconciling for the kids, right? I think that's great. I don't know how bad things got. I think the press blows things out of proportion. It might have been bad. I don't know. It seemed like it was pretty bad, but now they're on good terms and I'm happy for the kids. When I think of like stay-at-home mom or like traditional mom, I think it had like 50s mom, right? right? Like wearing the skirt and she has a beer ready for you and she puts a pie on it. It's not like that anymore, right? I think whatever works for you, if that's the dynamic that works for your family or your partner, Terrific, but if not, I think we've come so far past that that whatever works for you works for you, right? Je Jeff, I'm looking at you and, and kind of half laughing because, and Erica, you'll you'll think you'll get this as well. I remember when uh, I was like in the fifth or sixth grade, and I got something like, "What is your parent doing?" I was like, "My father's an attorney, and my mom is a stay-at-home mom," and she got that, and she was like, "I have a PhD, and I'm running a consulting business." <laughs> A That's six amazing. figure consulting business from <laughs> out of the house, and I'm like, stay at home, mom. Wow. And she's like, what? That Erica Cobb. So, I know, I'm sorry, hilarious. Dr. McLemore. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I mean, you know, it's the perception. Like, we all have kind of subscribed to this perception. And for the brave few, especially before their time, people have made decisions that, you know, what was considered traditional and acceptable isn't going to be how they're going to live their life. I mean, I say that as a woman who's going to be 40 in two weeks, and I don't have children, and I would like to have a family. Um, that is so, like, against the grain for so many people. But the truth is, I wouldn't have had the family that I hope to have in the future even five years ago or ten years ago so what things look like for you should be what's really in your like heart and soul to carry on your legacy well said and couples like Brad and Angie worked together on a film or who have worked together in a film but then divorced shortly after now that is the reason why Michelle Pfeiffer says she will never work with her husband so Michelle has been married to successful TV producer David E Kelly for 20 27 years, she told The New Yorker that her husband, who, by the way, is behind hit shows like Ali McBeal, Big Little Lies, is great at writing for women, but she has no interest in working with him. She sees other Hollywood couples with a great marriage work together, then the next year, divorce. Yeah, I mean, my husband and I work together and it can be tough, it really can. We actually had to kind of restructure our dynamic. When we first started our candle company, we were all in all the time. And then it just, it became a little exhausting. That's all we were talking about was candles, candles, candles. And it kind of like, we kind of forgot that we are a married couple as well. So right. we've had to completely restructure that dynamic. And then um, it's, I think, I can't imagine going back to the way it used to be. So for sure, it, it saved our marriage. You technically work with your wife, or you have. I have, yeah. Me and my wife, I mean, again, it's going back to the, the first story. What works for you, right? Me and my wife are the perfect yin and yang. We're the complete opposites. But when it comes to working with my wife, she gets me, right? So if we've done a lot of travel shows, like on the road shows. She gets what I'm, so if I'm upset, I'm mad, I had a bad day of filming, whatever it may be, she knows me, right? As opposed to if me and you, Sam, were on the road, we would have a difficult working relationship if I acted the same way. You'd be like, Jeff's difficult to work with. It'd label <laughs> me differently, right? No. My, no, but I'm saying it's right. like that working relationship, you kind of get a little more leeway with your partner, right? Totally. And I give her the same thing. So I'm like, that's just my wife. I love you. We're going to get through this as opposed to like, me and Sam aren't talking today. You know right. what I mean? It, 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 it works a little differently. So in that way, it's an advantage for me and my wife. Right? Yeah, you yeah. guys definitely get And normally I'd say kind of what Jeff is talking about. It's like, oh, well, you have a very unique situation. Look at YouTube. Look at Facebook. Look at TikTok and Instagram. There are a lot of married couples, families on there that make their living by projecting out what they're doing. Oh, we have six kids. Oh, you know, we have a home contractor show. So I think a lot of couples can understand what you guys are doing, whether it's a, a business but that isn't in front of the camera or one. At, oh. It definitely takes finessing. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. You, it's hard to get out of work mode. I love it's hard. It. <laughs> I thought you had like a point following that up. Like it takes finessing. Oh, me? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> she, just wanted to cut, she just wanted to cut me off, cut my brilliance off. Me too. I just, right. want, I just Go ahead wanted and to my mic, Sam. in and Muted be like Jeopardy. Just part of the conversation. <laughs> Adele is known for writing songs about heartache, and when her new album drops, don't expect any tunes about her recent divorce. According to The Sun, as part of her divorce settlement from her ex, Simon, Adele has agreed not 
to sing about their relationship. It's all a move to protect their eight year old son from hearing about his parents breakup. Adele is reportedly OK with the deal because it's a show of respect. Erica, do you think this will impact her music? Definitely, Ooh, definitely. What? I am I am all about protecting the child. Um, you know, obviously things are different when there's a child involved. But the truth is the way that we connect to Adele is through her experiences that she emotes in her music. And I, you know, I'm not against this move. I just wish I didn't know about it because by making it public that she's not going to go there when a lot of people were kind of hoping, people who maybe were going through a divorce themselves or have Having relationship issues. Um, I would have rather have not known that she's not going to apply that into her music because now it's just kind of like, well, what are we getting? Yeah, and Erica, I don't like the eight year old being used as like this child has to be protected. This kid's gonna grow up like he's the emperor of the Ming dynasty. Like what? this kid is gonna have the best <laughs> life ever. You don't know so let's that stop. Out. His because, mom's Adele. Okay, but just because she's wealthy, you think that all of it. He's I not, think it helps a lot, Sam. You don't I think it Albert, does. Yes, you're he's gonna have rose petals household. at his feet. So now we can't have an album. What's she gonna sing about? Growing up on the streets? Albert. What else does she have? I think she made the right decision. Oh, stop. But just don't use the whole eight year old. Stop. Yeah, I'm with the Eric. That's the whole that throwing the kid in there like you did this for the kid. Like his lawyer cared about that. He didn't want to get, he didn't want to get the business on that album. So he's no. like, oh, it's about she, this kid. No, she's Stop. protecting her kid. Natalie Portman has had it with fairy tales. The actress recently told Australia's The Project. She realized that the fairy tales she was reading her daughter were sexist. So she released a book of reimagined fairy tales called Natalie Portman's Fables. She said princess stories like Cinderella are problematic. Watch. All those kind of princess stories are really problematic. I mean, Cinderella also has a massive leap in logic where like you have to fit into the shoe and only one person can fit into a shoe, but he doesn't remember the face of the girl he was dancing with last night. <laughs> like like it, it does also doesn't make sense on top of being very offensive. <laughs> so they're definitely up for uh, rewrites. Yeah, thank goodness the newer ones like Frozen and Tangled are all about feminism, but the older ones, I mean, uh, what about the fact with Sleeping Beauty? Sleeping Beauty, I mean, there's no consent there. Our lives there. are ruined, Sam. What? Our lives have been ruined, okay, Sam? Our lives are ruined. Why? We can't watch anything the same. No. Because I'm telling you, this is an ongoing thing in my house. Now my favorite movies, like Waiting to Exhale, for instance, I can't even watch it. I watch that movie probably like every other week. Now <laughs> all I'm thinking about is, why is it okay that he can start a relationship that we all celebrated with Angela Bassett when his <laughs> wife was dying of cancer? Who said that was okay? Right. Like, I talk through everything. It's like all these things that we just let go and escapism, they don't exist anymore. Now we're way too awake about everything every single thing and our lives have been ruined. Our favorite movies and shows are ruined. I think it's improving. Don't, don't get me started on Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Do they touch on narcissism in this book? Yeah, book? putting what? her name Portman's on it. Yeah. fables? What? It, she just, just saying, put her name all she's over using... She's knocking down other princesses and she's like, check out this princess, Natalie Portman's fables. No, she's <laughs> making... <laughs> No. <laughs> when I don't you know have your jardinier, you're not going to call it Jeff's jardinier. I just hate for the sake of hating. I, I don't let my kids Good read Rudolph. Her. What? Rudolph the Red. It, it's like they take you advantage. They make fun of Rudolph. him. They make fun of him. They send him to a place for unwanted toys. Then when they need him because their butts are in a sling, they go get him, <laughs> use him. You're right. And then sit, then now oh, now we're all cool. Now that I can use your red nose, but before that, you're I made fun right of your nose. facial disturbity. Uh, <laughs> no, that's not cool. I don't let my kids read that. Mm -mm. Santa was wrong. Santa's a grown man letting him make fun of that. Well, Erica made great points and just fell off the rail. Sorry. <laughs> Erica, don't start away. I agree with Al. I do too. Coming up on DBL, Lady Gaga has her own line of Oreo cookies, but Are good using me now? luck finding them. We've got the sweet scoop. Plus, the Girl Scouts are getting creative with how they're selling their cookies this year, Al. If mm -hmm. you've been watching DBL for a while, you know Mr. Al's going to get fired up. Check out our DBL staff as we go to break. Mm -hmm. They're working from home during the pandemic, but one day we will all be back together in the studio like old times. I cannot wait for that. Hey, BJ, we'll be right back. Closed captioning provided by... <laughs> Thank you.
Although COVID-19 is known for attacking the lungs, a disturbing range of symptoms have been tied to the virus, including blood clots, heart damage, and even neurological disorders. Now, according to information published in the journal Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism, over 14% of people hospitalized with severe COVID-19 developed diabetes. Some of the patients had no pre-existing risk factors for the disease. Right now, researchers say they can't prove a direct link between COVID-19 and these new diabetes cases, but they are definitely investigating. Cases of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes have been reported. Type 1 is when your body can't make the insulin needed to control blood sugar. Type 2 is when your body makes too little or becomes insulin resistant. They're also investigating if COVID-19 has created an entirely new type of diabetes that works differently. There are also questions about whether these diagnoses are permanent. Other viruses like SARS have been linked before to new cases of diabetes, but in that instance, blood sugar levels for most patients return to normal within two years. Meanwhile, researchers continue to collect data on coronavirus and diabetes in the hope of getting answers. This February, DBL is all new every day. Like, it is such a joke. Your no, 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 hold on. I was shocked. I don't know what you're saying. Here come the Pistons. I love this story. Stick with us in 2021. We're going to have a great year. <laughs>
I just, what do you want me to Y'all say? Y'all better not have a Girl Scout cookie. <laughs> Eric, Eric, don't, don't worry. Erica. Just go to Grubhub and get it like you there, would any other corporation. No, there better this not be cookie. one thin mint in that studio. There, <laughs> not uh, one. I, it just really, because it's, it'd be so interesting if these Oreos were sold to us by little girls. But everybody would be like, why are these little girls at my door selling me Oreos? But the Girl Scout cookies have cornered the market on kids. They have used the image. First of all, there are no more Girl Scouts involved in this process anymore. Yes, they are. It's a driver and your front door. So there's no Girl Scouts. How You're just you buying know? cookies now. What if they're on a bike? Uh, why would girls be on a bike? Why not? Dr you know what, Albert? What? Let's, what? Erica, why Erica. Are you guys no, to point, which girl is getting credit for selling those cookies that Wait, come to yes. your house? Why are they point. allowed to attach their business to adorable little kids and nobody else can? That's it's, not fair for the market. A lot of them to Erica. Erica will speak to this. A lot of them still are... Maybe they came up with this business model, Al, because the whole they process... came up with a multi-international uh, conglomerate Maybe. business model oh, so to sell cookies. You don't think young kids could come up with the Grubhub model? Erica was a Girl Scout. Young Erica. kids could come up with the Grubhub model. Do you I understand was what a you're Girl saying? Scout. And Erica? I will do my best to be honest and to be fair. Uh, Al is salty, so mm -hmm. everyone yes, beware. You're, okay? you're in the you're in the you're in the uh, the Girl Scout cult too. They got you. It's a corporation, and they're using adorable little Ericas to sell cookies, just like any other junk to food. To teach them entrepreneurship and get pins. To, well, where are they in this process? It okay. looks like they got cut out coming of this up one. On, coming up on DBL, we'll show you a woman's unique take on a tree house. It's a fairy house. How this whimsical creation is especially touching for one little boy. Next in Heart Threads. DBL is recognizing black leaders who are making history right now. Like 22-year-old Amanda Gorman, whose profound poem, The Hill We Climb, was recited during the inauguration. We are striving to forge our union with purpose. Amanda Gorman, thank you for using your voice to uplift and inspire us. The COVID-19 pandemic has dominated our minds and our lifestyles. It's reached the point where it's difficult to make simple decisions like what to have for dinner or what movie to watch. It's called decision fatigue. And here's the connection to the pandemic. Psychologists tell us stress makes decision making more difficult. The pandemic has created added stress and the need to make more decisions. A visit with a friend wasn't stressful before the pandemic. Now we have to weigh the risks with the benefits as information on COVID-19 is updated. Psychologists tell us that since the onset of the pandemic, people are experiencing mental burnout earlier in the day. They suggest breaks between Zoom meetings with a walk around the house to give the brain a rest to lessen the impact of decision fatigue. This February, DBL is all new every day. No, I think that's ridiculous. Really? It's, okay. Like, it is such a joke. I was shocked. Oh, I meant for you to chime in on. I don't know what you're saying. DBL is just getting started. Here come the Pistons. I love this story. Stick with us in 2021. We're going to have a great year. <laughs> DBL and inmates agonizing death, but no one would listen. Could this tragedy have been prevented? I would have probably had somebody take his vitals. I would have checked him, but I'd also have called an ambulance. That's tomorrow in True Crime Chronicles, only on DBL. Welcome back to DBL. Today's Heart Threads is all about how a simple gesture can mean the world to someone. Watch how a woman's bright idea brightened a little boy's outlook on life. This woman brought joy to a four-year-old with a medical condition by building a fairy house. 
after cutting down a 100 plus foot tall maple tree in her front yard, Lori Bassinet wanted to do something magical. A lover of fairies, Lori turned the stump into a fairy house. The fairy house attracted many admirers, even from other towns. They can spend as much time out here as they want. You know, I get more joy looking out the window, seeing people out here checking it out than anything. But one four-year-old is particularly special. Asher McGowan has a congenital heart condition and needs supplemental oxygen, making life during the pandemic extra difficult. When Asher saw the fairy house, he was instantly captivated. Look at all the things in there. <laughs> it's Christmas in there. <gasps> Whoa. Asher's mom is grateful to have something that brings her son so much joy. It means a lot that someone just would go through the trouble, you know, to put so much work and love into to something that brings joy to, to other people in the community. It's how we make it through. I think we lift each other up, and in a time like today, we all need that. We need something that's gonna boost our morale, make us feel happy. We'll be right back. Promotional Consideration is brought to you by... Big number off the top, 66%. That's how effective Johnson & Johnson's vaccine is at preventing COVID-19. Much lower than Pfizer and Moderna's, which are in the upper 90s. So let's verify, why is Johnson & Johnson's vaccine needed to end the pandemic? Our sources are the vaccine test results from Johnson & Johnson and Dr. Anthony Fauci, the country's leading infectious diseases expert. Let's start with that 66% effectiveness. According to Johnson & Johnson's test results, that was the average from the global test. The results in the United States put that number higher at 72%. In an interview with our Verify team, Dr. Anthony Fauci said it's also effective at preventing people with COVID cases from going to the hospital. One of the things that might get lost in the numbers is that when you look at the protection against serious disease, it's high. It's 85% or more. Those are just the numbers. Johnson & Johnson's vaccine is also more practical for widespread use across the country. It can be stored in a normal refrigerator, whereas Pfizer's vaccine requires a special deep freezer. Another point, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is only one shot, compared to Pfizer and Moderna's, which are two shots spread out over a month. So even though the number makes you raise your eyebrows and say, well, there's a big difference between 72 and 95, Practically speaking, if the only thing you're worried about is keeping people out of the hospital and not getting people seriously ill, there clearly is value added with the Johnson & Johnson. This February, DBL is all new every day. No, I think that's ridiculous. Really? It's, okay. Like, it is such a joke. I was shocked. Oh, I meant for you to chime in on. I don't know what you're saying. DBL is just getting started. Here come the Pistons. I love this story. Stick with us in 2021. We're going to have a great year.
telling stories of hope and healing, love and loss. A model who voluntarily amputated her leg chooses to lose the other. We are with her as she fights her way back to the catwalk. I, I cry a lot. <laughs> a transgender power lifter is banned from competing against women. Is this fair? Plus, the secret life of a Hollywood love and sex addict and love in the time of COVID. Our series to give you all the feels before Valentine's Day. Life is too short. Let's just start our lives together. Also, in True Crime Chronicles, Jodi Arias and John Benet Ramsey, stunning information never revealed before. In Freedom Files, wrongfully convicted, a man locked away for three decades while the true killer confesses for the world to see. Did he commit that crime? No, he didn't. Who did? I did. And could you forgive your father's killer? How one woman found the strength to do the unthinkable. It wasn't really about forgiveness for me as how do I get back my power? This February, don't miss a day of DBL. Our viewers are coming at Al left and right. Okay, in regard to cookies, Al. Come at me, bro. That's not true. I bought cookies from a link from one of my daughter's students, and she was very excited and got credit for it. And then we've got Rob Where's and the money? Rudolph did not get sent to the Island of Misfit Toys. He ran away because he was being bullied. It was also a yeah. sort of the typical hero's journey story. He went back and rescued them later. Uh, no, he went back once they needed him. He didn't go back no, until it was back. a terrible was, storm and he, he had a red a nose. He was they hero. used him. No. We have to say <laughs> goodbye to all of our co-workers who tuned in as they worked from home. We loved having you here today, virtually at least. Shout out Runo. DBL's new every day. We will see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye, guys. Bye, Erica.